years, 13 years of school, that can be a drag, man. We need them excited. Every moment is an opportunity to pour hope into them. And, and when we talk about our sound, it's a few things. We ought to ask ourselves, what is sound 180? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a concept, it's an idea that, that I've created, and it's a program that I've created. You can find out more before we get started. You can find out more on Facebook. You're more than welcome to get on there. Um, I, that doesn't bother me if you're on your phones. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm cool about that. Um, but if you go to Facebook, there's a Sound 180 Educator page. It says Sound 180 Educator Enrichment and Solutions. And the name is exactly what it says. We're providing you that sweet encouragement, that enrichment, that music, that message to keep you going. And we also provide solutions. Because motivation gets you started, but habits is what's going to keep you going. Okay? We can, we can do the rah-rah thing. Convocation is great, but, but you know, a, a month from now, you need some help. We can't, we can't call the drum line, right? We like them, but we need something else, right? So you need the enrichment, and you need the solutions, too, okay? So we got that on there. Check out the Facebook page, and we'll, we'll get you signed up. But, but Sound 180 is the idea that each and every one of us has the ability to create a sound 180 days of classroom instruction and harmony. And we do that by, by helping you guys become highly effective and empowered by refining your perspectives, your structures, your practices and just your overall consistency to create that sound 180 days with your students. We want harmony. We want harmony. Discovering the 180 days of classroom harmony starts with you finding three things. Number one, your inspiration. Everybody say sound check. Sound check. Yeah, you're going to have to sound check. You know, no, when we're on the stage, what you didn't, what you didn't know was before y'all came in, at some point today, I did this. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Y'all done heard that sometime, right? So, so you, gotta, you gotta check the mic. Why? You don't show up on the stage and hope it's on. I hope they got a battery in it. Hope's not a strategy, and not in the classroom. You have to be strategic. You have to be consistent. You have to be intentional about what you do. So, so that starts with you. That's why in here I've included this Sound 180 accountability journal. You know, it's, it's not that we're wrong. I'm not here to, to teach or to preach to you or anything like that. But I'm here to remind you of who you are. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves. We've got to uh, renew our minds daily. Because sometimes they'll try to take our minds, right? They'll try to take our state of mind. So some mornings you need to get up and you need to refocus and recalibrate. Uh, uh, we had the band director here, uh, Mr. Gladney was in here. And, and, and me and he was talking about how students can hit the right buttons, the right keys, but it sounds wrong if they're not in tune, right? And, and, and we're the same way. We have to be in tune with what we're doing. So every day what I do is I, I, I practice what I teach. I practice what I preach. I start each and every day with a Sound 180 accountability journal. And it focuses on a few things we'll talk about today. Just making sure that I'm, that I'm, that I'm being who I say I am. All right? So that's important. Organization. Setting the stage. Nothing in here is by accident. When I walked into here, I want, I want to show y'all something. Nobody else has heard this day. I'm sharing this with you. When we walked in today, the classroom looked totally different. I had to ask forgiveness. I didn't ask permission. I had to ask forgiveness. I moved the chairs around. Because I knew how I wanted my stage set. Right? I moved everything. I didn't make a friend today, I don't think. I am curious to know what she says when I leave. If you hear something, let me know what she said. Because I, I did. I moved everything. Why? Because today, during this day, this is my stage. And I needed to operate the way that I needed to operate for me to be comfortable. When you get in somebody's vehicle, don't you change the mirror? Don't you change the seating? Why? Because this is critical. This is crucial. You don't sacrifice convenience. I got to move this thing around because I've been charged with a task. Our classrooms are the same way. We got to set the stage up for success. How does our class have to be set up, organized, maintained for us to get optimum teaching out? Don't overlook that. Maybe your classroom doesn't look like your neighbors. Maybe your classroom doesn't look like it looked last year. We're going to talk about that. What does that mean? Setting the stage. And it's not just the physical, too. Sometimes it's how you operate in it, too. Setting the stage. You're setting the environment. You're setting the atmosphere for learning. What does that look like? There's a reason I played the music when y'all walked in. I didn't do it for the first group. 
they were charged up. <laughs> they had just had the, 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 the pastries and the, the fruit and everything for breakfast. Everybody was happy to see each other. They were high-fiving. They didn't need that. Oh, but after lunch, somebody went, <laughs> somebody went to Roberts, man. <laughs> I said, oh, I know this look. I said, hey, the crew, the crew that's been here, they'll tell you, I didn't play the song. I played it for, that, the, for the post-lunch group because I knew they needed something. And then this group, it's the end of the day. Are you starting to understand how your kids feel when they come to class? They're tired. So what did I do? I put the music on. Man, my girl, she came in. She was like, mm, uh, I don't think she would have did that if the music was on, right? But that's beautiful. That's what we want. How would you feel if your students came to class like that? Ah, it's math. Let's go. <laughs> Bro, that'd be phenomenal. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen, and it should happen every day. But we have to set that stage. Motivation, here's a big one. Knowing your audience. You gotta know your audience. Look, I put the music on, but I'm gonna be honest, this afternoon, I'm playing, I'm going back to Louisiana, I'm playing an event for the Lieutenant Governor, okay? Now, they, they hired me. Uh, I'm not the greatest saxophone player in the world, but they hired me because I am the most probably capable saxophonist out there. Meaning, uh, in my, when I do my little solo shows, kind of like I did the little solo thing right there, I've got a, a music bank that I can pull from, like iTunes. I probably got, I don't know, 5,000 songs in there that I just, I just know, right, right? And I don't say that to impress you, but to just impress this on you, that, that they, they wanted me because they know whatever they need, I can deliver. Okay? There may be somebody that can play a particular song better than me, but you're gonna be hard pressed to find somebody that can that can do the jazz. And then then if the if the if the thing calls for something else, they need R&B. I can do the R&B. And when they call for the country, I can do the country. I can do the country. Don't look at me like that. I can do the country. That's why they hired me. They wanted somebody that can be everything. Why do they want somebody that can be everything? Because they want somebody who their audience will respond to. Our students, they can't respond to us if we're, not, if we're not aware of where they're at. And I'm gonna be honest, it becomes more and more difficult every year. I won't lie to you, I'm losing touch. Somebody told me earlier today, I said something about my kids and their age and everything. My, my daughter, she'll be 15 soon and my son's nine. And she said, oh my God, you look 25. I said, bless you, <laughs> bless you. But the truth of the matter is I'm not 25. And the truth of the matter is, as every year goes by, there becomes a greater divide and disconnect between what I think is great and what they appreciate, right, right? Thank goodness for my daughter, she kinda, she'll, she'll throw me a bone every once in a while, daddy, don't do that, look, this is what we are doing now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do when she leaves, but I do know this, I have, I, I've made a point to connect with others that are in tune, okay? I told, showed y'all that yesterday, I ain't no rapper. <laughs> but I know what I got to do to do what I got to do to get them to do what they got to do. I'm not listening to that, that stuff at home. But I'm, I'm, enough of a, uh, I'm, I'm enough of a craftsman to understand I have to draw some influence from the things that influence them so that I can then influence them. So these are the things you got to know. You got to know your audience. You got to know your audience. That's where we start with the sound check. Now the sound check, it kind of goes back to the accountability journal, okay? And, and, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys, you guys will be able to kind of check that out on your own. But let's, let's just talk about what the sound is, okay? Sound is an acronym. It says, see yourself beyond yourself. That means it's not just about you. Matter of fact, I take it back. It's all about you. And it's not about you. Meaning that everything starts with you. It comes through you. But it cannot be simply about you. We have to see their needs first and foremost. Everything that I teach is student driven. I am in constant pursuit of their heart. Okay? I have to know what, what, I have to know what's important to them. Even this, you know, I know what that means now. I didn't know before. That's that little kiki thing, right? right? I didn't know that. I learned, I'm, learn, I'm a student. <laughs> Boy, now if I do something, I do like this. Oh, I got them, man. What you know about that, Mr. Smith? Man, what you know about math, right? <laughs> hey, you know, we can talk and we have a good time, but I can only have those moments when I can see beyond myself. I told y'all yesterday, I like Al Green. 
but I know this enough about my students. I can't come in there talking about Al Green. I can't come in there and play that every day. Now, once they know my heart, and once we have relationship and rapport, then I've had a few of my students, they say, Mr. Smith, what's up with that love and happiness? I said, bro, don't play with me, don't you know? <laughs> But that takes time to cultivate, right? <laughs> right? So you gotta see yourself beyond yourself. The next one is operate in optimism and excellence daily. Daily. No days off. No days off. Every day. I promise you. Every day you come to my classroom. I have guests that come all, all the time. Matter of fact, we have a very large school district. So y'all are very blessed um, in the sense that, that you, you're very connected and in tune with the, with the hierarchy, the administration. Like the superintendent, he doesn't seem to be somebody that's just far off and aloof. Like you, you, he's approachable, right? But when you have a school district as large as ours, it is very odd for us to see the superintendent because there's tens of thousands of, of teachers and tens of thousands of students you know, in the district. But last week, the assistant superintendent, this is the second day of school, second day of school. He comes, he pops his head in the room. Hey, I just want to see what y'all doing. Who does that? What evil person comes in the second day of school? <laughs> But, and then look, on top of that, it, I teach band, okay? So it wasn't even my band students. He came in fine arts survey. I had just, I had just met these students, because some of you might be like, oh, you see the students multiple years. No, this class, I teach classes where I'm just like you, where I only have them one year, and I got them that first year. I had just met those kids yesterday, and my man was in there. <laughs> and you know what? Class was phenomenal, because from day one, I set the tone, we're gonna to talk about it. I tell the students, hey, there's nothing special about what we do. Every day is special. Every day, every day. So I don't care, you can come to my classroom any day of the week, you're gonna see excellence. And that sounds braggadocious, I don't mean to say it like that, I'm just telling you the truth. Every day you're gonna, you're gonna see excellence. Why? It's not, it's not my opinion, it's because I'm putting out excellence. I'm telling them what excellence looks like. I'm dictating the narrative. So they can't help but respond back to what I give. All of us, to some respect, are reactive. And when we react, we always react to what we know. No one ever reacts to something they're not familiar with. We react to familiar behaviors and understanding. So when I can instill a certain level of understanding from day one, then I know that they're going to react in the way that I instructed them to. That's what we're trying to do here, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Creating that sound 180. Utilizing all available resources. You got everything you need. You got everything you need. Think about it. If all of us just had one solution in this room, what would our year look like if we all worked together? If I knew that I could reach out to somebody else, but here's the problem. Teaching by its own nature is very self-destructive. That's why people burn out. Because the nature of a teacher is, I stay in my room, I'm a prisoner of my room, I'm, I'm a prisoner of the bubble. I can't even go use the bathroom, right? Like really, you can't do anything, you're just locked up, right? And, and, and we have all this wisdom and knowledge and understanding and strategies, but it's rarely connected until maybe a PLC, but then when we go to the PLC, how positive is it? How productive is it someday? If we made a habit of staying connected with one another before and after the PLCs, you know, do what they tell you to do in the PLC, but I'm talking about real life, y'all. Real life, are we, are, is the only time we hang together when we, when we go out and have a beverage and hang out, are we working to create a quality education for all our students? Are we working together to create a quality education for all of our students? That's what I'm talking about, using the resources. If all of us just had one answer and we all worked together, this, to to this year would look totally different. This year would look totally different. That's what I mean when I say utilizing the resources and nourishing the relationships. Are we nourishing one another? Are we uplifting one another? Are we pouring into one another? I'm saying this right now, not to fuss at you because it's kind of like preaching to the choir. I know you guys get it, but I'm just, I'm not here to, to preach or to teach. I just want to remind you of some things, remind you of who you are, remind you that, that you don't need, oh boy, I'm about to say something controversial. You don't need the professional development. You are the professional development. If you can remember who you are throughout the year, then, then when I see her cup is empty, I pour into her. She doesn't have to go to the conference. Then when you go to the conference, you're more, you can take in more information because you're refreshed. How many of us have gone to a conference totally empty and you didn't get anything out of it? 
But throughout the school year, if we can make a practice of nourishing one another, it helps us create a sound 180. And then the last one, it's just basically what my mama told me. Don't stop. Keep on going. And, and I'm saying that because we, we are in a crisis situation right now. We have so many educators that are leaving the profession the first five years. And those first five years are critical because you don't know a whole lot the first five years. You know more of what you don't know than what you do know. But when you get to that five year mark, then you begin to understand, OK, I can do this. You begin to understand how you can access the resources you need to access. You begin to understand what battles are big, what battles are small. You, you, you just understand. I have two children. The first child, we were a mess. Second child, oh yeah, he can eat that off the floor. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, come on, y'all looking at me like that. Come on, five second rule. Five second rule. Five second. I don't look at me like five second rule. <laughs> But what am I saying? Awareness after after some experience, you know, like 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 Kenny Rogers said back in the day, you know, got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, <laughs> know when to walk away. Please don't run, y'all. Please don't run. Stay the five. Yeah. You know which battles to pick. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Think about that that very first year. You know, it's like, man, you were you were attacking everything. But everything didn't warrant you attacking everything. And we're losing so many people because they just lack a certain awareness. They got the skill set. They got the, 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 the intellect. But awareness is key. That's the one thing all of us lack is self-awareness. Think about it. I don't care how smart you are, how degreed you are. All of us lack self-awareness. It's like your nose. You can see it. But you can't see it like somebody else can see it. I promise you, you can squint and cross your eyes. You're not going to see it like somebody else will see it. That's why they created mirrors, right? So why in the world, why, why do we choose to look at our own noses day in and day out? What are you talking about, Mickey? We've got so much technology at our disposal. we got these smartphones. Rarely do we use them to make us better. I promise you the football team is using them. And, they, and they, they are already winning. But you know what? They're not going to decide, well, we're not going to look at film this year. We won, we won in the past. They're going to look at more film. Why are they looking at the film, somebody? Why? Somebody tell me, why are they looking at the film? Because they just like to see themselves? Come on, talk to me. How, how are they getting better? Watching the play. Oh, say it. Learn the mistakes. Give me another one. Learn the mistakes. What else? What else? How about tendencies? See, if you get too predictable, you lose. That, I don't care how sweet the team is, if they keep running the same play. And sometimes in our classes, we run in the same play. Man, why did my stuff get thwarted? How did they know it was coming? You're predictable. Yeah. I've seen that before. You, come on, you're predictable. Like I saw that a mile away. What are you doing? Don't be predictable. Watch yourself. Film yourself. Man, you can take a little camera on a phone. You get a little tripod, you set it up. You don't have to have that. I get that. This is suspicious. <laughs> Y'all look, I get that. You're going to lose with that one. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, your kids walk in, they're going to be like, ah, it's showtime, right? But just put up something inconspicuous. Nah, Mickey, I don't really want to use my phone. It was too much storage. Go, do you know you can go, literally go to the pawn shop and buy an old iPhone that nobody wants, like the iPhone 2 or something ridiculous, and, and, and they'll give it to you for like 10 bucks, and you just simply use it for storage, for videoing, and you just put it, and it's an old beat up phone, you don't have to worry about something. If they steal it, it's five bucks. If they drop it, it was five bucks. If you lose it, it was five bucks. And you put it up there and you video yourself. Why am I videoing myself? Because it's not about what you teach, it's about how is it perceived. And there's certain things we're not aware of when we're teaching. We think we're doing it a certain way. For example, my, my assistant band director, he teaches in the mornings. He's there with me a half day, teaches in the mornings. And, 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 and one day, I decided while he was teaching, I'd pull up a chair and I'd have a seat and I'd play right with the kids. I'd see what their, their experience was like. My man walked up on me. Now, I need y'all to know my assistant band director is six foot five, 
I'm not going to say his weight. I'm just going to say he's not me. Okay. <laughs> and when he walked up on me, he, he said, he said, Mickey, they don't respond to me like they respond to you. And he, he brought some enthusiasm. Do you understand how uncomfortable this enthusiasm might be from a six foot five man with so many pounds? I had to pull him aside. I didn't, I, I didn't see it either until I was the one being walked on. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and we ain't got beef, and he scared me. I said, man, we may have to reevaluate your practices. I said, you can't do what I do. And that's what's so beautiful. We all have a sound. I'm not here to say you got to do it like Mickey Smith. You got to do it like this person. No, no, no. You've already got your own sweet sound. You just need to become more aware of it. And little things we have can help us to do that. And we need to do that so we don't lose the people in the first five years. We need them to keep on going. Sound check, okay? More than teachers, we're also leaders. We're leaders. I got this thing I do with students. I, I take out a chain, and, and um, it's not what you think. To, to, to relax. I, 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 but I have a chain, and, and, and Dwight Eisenhower used this example. He talked about how, how if you take a chain link, and you just dump it, and you try to push it, you can't control where that chain falls. It's just going to go where it goes. But if you take that same chain, and you pull it, then you have full control over it. And our students are often the same way. You know, if, if we are leading by example in what we do, they're more likely to follow. But if we're pushing them and forcing them into places and things that we ourselves are not willing to go or, or we have not modeled or showed, then you can't expect it to be 100 all the time. That's what I mean by you've got to be a motivator. You've got to show them the way. You've got to encourage them. You've got to be, we're going to talk about it, you've got to be their biggest cheerleader because they may not have anything that shows them that they're anything. That's what I mean by cheerleader. You don't lie to them. I'm not saying rah, rah, I'm up for no reason. But, but you've got to see the beauty they have. Next, you've got to be a teacher. That means you have to communicate and explain things to them. You can't just put it out, well, look, it's on page four. You gotta, you gotta, gotta break it down. You know, for me, I talk about, I talk about posture. I teach posture, and nobody likes posture. Who in the world likes posture? That's the most boring lesson if there ever was one. Because right now we're not dealing with music. I'm teaching the fundamentals. I dictate everything. But you know what? I can take something like posture, and I can change your life with it. I'll prove it to you. We all know posture, and we don't have time. I can go around, everybody can give me their own definition of it. You're probably formulating one in your mind. But with my students, I tell them this. I said it starts with a few key elements. One of the first things is you have to, you have to sit in a, in, a, in a manner where you're, you're, you're as tall as you can be. I need you to sit tall. Now here's where you mess up at. When you tell a kid something like sit tall, you understand what that means. Everybody in this room, I would imagine, probably knows what that means. But do you know that there's a 10-year-old there's an eight-year-old, there's a five-year-old, there's an 18-year-old who does not know what sit tall means because nobody has ever told them to sit tall. Maybe nobody tells them to do anything. So you say sit tall and they don't give you the response you want. And you mad. You should know better. Well, maybe they should, but they don't. So maybe instead of saying sit tall when I'm talking to students, I might tell them stand up and they'll stand up because most understand that. Now, you, you, did you notice what I did as well? What did I do? So if you didn't know what stand up meant, I just showed you. I need y'all to stand up and I'll stand up. Then I tell them something like this. I need you to stand down. Now, of course, confusion comes across the room. I like confusion. It makes them listen. I like saying stuff that doesn't make any sense sometimes. Then I'll show them how it makes sense. Watch this. Stand down means that I'm down, but I'm standing down. I'm standing from the belt up. So I'm standing down because I look the same here as I do here. Now they got a picture. Oh, I can do that. That's the first, especially the boys. I can do that. That's the first thing they do. <laughs> I ain't even asked them to do anything. Now they're ready, they ready to showcase and model, right? So I tell them to sit tall. Then I remind them, let, let, let the shoulders relax because you can't perform tense. We can't either as teachers, by the way. So that's why the sound 180 accountability uh, journal is so important because if you come, if you come to school tense, you're not teaching. You're just surviving. We need you thriving. So I tell them, you've got to perform, relax. Let the shoulders fall. Then I tell them, I need you, you know, we got to open up the diaphragm, all that kind of stuff. I go through all that. And I say, you, you, let, let the shoulders meet in the back. Bring those shoulder blades back. 
Now, some kids don't know what a shoulder blade is. They don't know anything. So I have to tell them, look, I need, I need Superman in the house. <laughs> they understand that. What did I do? I brought it to somewhere they know. And then I tell them, look, I need, I need, I need your feet. I need your feet solid. I need balance right here. We all need balance. We all need that security. I said, I need your feet flat. And I did a great job explaining that. But you know what? Very few of you could repeat back what I said verbatim. And sometimes we teach that way. We teach excellent, but they leave away with nothing. So after I teach it, then I have to come back after I teach, and now I have to reach. Watch this. First, you got to sit tall, let your shoulders fall. Make a meet in the back and put your feet down flat. You got to sit tall, let your shoulders fall. Make a meet in the back and put your feet down flat. You got to sit tall, let your shoulders fall. Make a meet in the back and put your feet down flat. You got to sit tall, let your shoulders fall. Make a meet in the back and put your feet down flat. I see you. I see she was like, oh. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? Not absolutely. Absolutely nothing. And then also, did you notice nonverbal cues? I didn't tell, hey, I need the whole class to participate. What did I do? Never broke stride. There's things that we can do to teach at a higher level. Now, here's the deal. How many things are you already doing that can just simply be refined? I'm not here to tell you you're doing something wrong. I'm not even saying you're making the wrong sound. We're just talking about tuning up the sound a little bit. How can we tweak it? How can we improve it? That's what we're looking for each and every day. Excuse me. So, so we're looking for that because when we do that, we become a role model. That's what I did. I taught as a role model. I showed them the example. We're all role models. You are phenomenal. Your teachers, you're phenomenal. I'll prove it to you. Go to Walmart and let one of your students see you. Oh my God. Oh, it's her. Look, guys. Oh, my God. It's, it's Miss. Oh, my God. She has apples. She bought apples. Have you ever seen that before? It's like, dude, I just got some apples. Like, why are you tripping? Because they don't expect you to be in places they are. I mean, you're a teacher. What are you doing in Signature Kroger? <laughs> I mean, I know it's Signature, but my goodness. They don't realize that, that we're just humanity on display. We're just people. But in their minds, we're phenomenal. Now you laugh at that, but when's the last time you saw a teacher that meant something to you? That teacher's still, you know, still here and doing well, and you ran into him. How did you feel? You turned into that little kid again. You got the butterfly. You're a grown woman. You're a grown man. And you saw that teacher, you was kind of afraid to speak to him. Do you understand how phenomenal you are to them? But here's the problem. Being phenomenal ain't fair. Because when I go to Signature Kroger, when I go to Walmart, I can't cut up like the other people do in Walmart. I done seen some stuff in Walmart, y'all. I done seen some stuff. I done seen more than I need to see in Walmart. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But I can't do what I see them do in Walmart. Because if I do it, first off, it's going to make the news. And they ain't going to put my name. They're going to say, West Orange Cove Consolidated Independent School District teacher. Yes. Found guilty. Yes. What they're going to say, what they're not, what they're, what they're going to say is, I can't believe she stole the apples. But you know what? It ain't about the apples. It ain't about the apples. It's the fact that I believed in her. Dang. She just as ratchet as the folks I'm hanging out with down the street. Right? I'm just saying, right? That's what they're going to say. Man, and then watch this. You tear a little piece of their hope away because they, they open themselves up to believe in you. And I'm not trying to put more pressure on you. I'm just letting you know who you are in their sight. Now, they'll never come out and say that. I know that because I'm a band director and I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade primarily. And there are so many sixth graders that will come up to me and go, wow, Mr. Smith, the eighth graders are so cool. I can't believe they played that song. And then they'll be in the same space and they'll never express that to one another. Sixth grader ain't never going to put himself out there and go tell an eighth grader that he admires him. What, do, what little boy going to do that? They're not going to do that. But they'll tell me, what are they saying about you that they'll never say to you? What are they thinking about you Phenomenal. that they'll never say to you? Always keep that in mind. Sometimes we wait on folks to tell us who we are. Sometimes you got to tell yourself. You are phenomenal. You're phenomenal. Even if they don't tell you, because the beauty is, if you stay in the game long enough, if you continue with that servant heart, 
you will understand it with time. They'll come back. I had one come back to me yesterday before I came to convocation. Young man, he's 18 years old. He came back to me and shared how impactful our time together was. He's getting ready to go to the military. I said, who, who else did you come see? Nobody. I just came to see you, Mr. Smith. We don't have that kind of relationship. I don't talk to him every day. So there's this 18-year-old man, man, who said, I need to find one person. I'm going to go see my middle school teacher. Do you understand like that? that that's why when I got here yesterday, I, I was fired up, man. I was fired up. He don't even know, man. He fired me up because it's like, yes. So we all need to be reminded that this thing matters. And I'm telling you, if you haven't experienced that yet, it's coming. It's coming. You just got to keep on going. Setting the stage. I got this thing I call first days lasting ways. I don't have time to go into it because it's a whole nother spill. But if you go to the Sound 180 Educator Enrichment and Solutions Facebook page, you can find the PowerPoint that I have there and I list, I, I show you how I go through it. The PowerPoint has nothing to do with my content. I, I have, honestly, I have not taught one single musical thought, idea. We ain't done a music worksheet. We hadn't done a music, uh, no strategy. We hadn't done anything musical. We hadn't even worked on posture yet. <laughs> you know what we've been working on? Our posture, our character. We've been talking about what it means to be the best we can be. We've been talking about where Mr. Smith's heart is at. I let them know who I am as a person. And I, again, I don't have time to go through it right now, but you can see I, every day I, I put little nuggets on that Facebook page. So if you go there, I'm going to hit you with something that will inspire you for the day. And, and, and what I've been doing this week is I've been giving people a glimpse of how I approach the first few days. It's one PowerPoint and I stretch that thing out for about two weeks. Somebody's like, that's crazy. No, it's not. I'm like the tortoise and the hare. Yeah, we all know about the tortoise. My man was like, bam. And I, I got a friend of mine, he was like the tortoise. He talked to me last night. He's like, Mickey, we're on page seven in the, in the music book. I said, good. I'll, I'll, meet, I'll see you at the end. He's like, but I, I need you to come by because I'm having trouble. I said, aha. What are you having trouble with? It was never anything musical. You know what he was having trouble with? They weren't listening. He was having trouble. They weren't participating correctly. I said, so did it benefit you to go seven pages in already? We barely got seven days and you in seven pages? Doesn't make sense. I said, I can take it slow. I won't even open up the book probably for another seven days and I promise you in about two or three days I'll pass you up. Because if you can get a kid to listen, how much more can you get done? I take the time at the beginning. I'll, I'll take one for the team. If that means that I'm showing them what this thing called learning really means. That's what I like to do. So we, we developed that culture. We'll, we'll talk more about it. You can see more on the, on the Facebook page. Just go to Sound 180 Educator Enrichment and Solutions. The next thing I do is the code of conduct. And the code of conduct was actually developed here. Mm. When I was teaching here. I had a, I had a class that was, I, well, it's pretty rough. It was rough. It was a rough year because we had a lot of turnover. A lot. Like, I get it. You didn't probably have some turnover. That this turnover was epic, okay? Which I'm sure you guys have experienced maybe to some degree even with the storm and everything else. It was epic and it was administrative epic turnover. So when the kids understood that, that, that nobody knew them from year to year, uh, I can get away with some stuff because I don't have that person that holding me accountable. It was, it was, it was pretty intense. So, so anyway, long story short, I started this thing where I would, I would dictate the norm. I'd start the class off by telling them what I expected them to do every day. And the things I expect from them are to follow directions, raise your hand to speak, stay in your seat, be prepared, respect property of others, treat others with respect, gum candy, food or drinks are not allowed. It's all on the page. So, so we say that every single day. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first instituted it, it didn't work as planned. Okay? But I knew it wasn't going to work as planned. What I did was I told the students, look, I'm tired of fighting with y'all. You start class, I don't. Now this is pretty, you know, I, Soup just already said he's going to be watching, so y'all may not be able to do this. He may poke his head in the, in the door. But I went and sat down. And you know what? They were terrible. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you. They were terrible. Then the next day they came in, I told them again, look, y'all start class, I don't. But something was different that day. They still weren't, they weren't great. The third day they came in, the worst student, worst student, the one that caused the most mischief. He said, hey, hey, y'all stop. It's time for us to start. See, what happened was they got tired of doing nothing. They thought they knew what they wanted. They don't know what they want. 
He said, y'all stop. It's time to start. Uh, uh, first, first one is. And two or three kids said, follow directions, because that's what we would do. We'd say the first one is, and the call and response, they would say, follow directions. Two or three kids said it, the other kids were like, ah, and they just kind of laughed. Then he got mad. Hey, no, for real, y'all stop. He's the leader. Hey, y'all stop, for real. It's time to, look, it's time, game over. First one is. Then the rest of them said it, follow directions. Mmm, they listen to each other sometimes more than they listen to us. He was the alpha, alpha male. You gotta find them. He was the one that caused the most mischief, but when given an opportunity to lead, I saw a different side of him. I said, oh, okay, I got it. I, I see what you're gonna do. You're gonna be my assistant band director. I called him in, I said, you're the assistant band director. What you mean? And I outlined what it is I wanted him to do. He showed up to class early. Matter of fact, it was a race. They broke some rules. You're not supposed to run at school. But they was running because whoever got there first got to say, first one is. And they ran to class. And after a while, the whole class started saying it. So I want you guys to say it with me. Anytime I say first one is, you say follow directions. First one is? Follow directions. And I'd say, no, no, no. I need to say it like this. First one is? Follow directions. There's no reason you should have said it any louder. But you did it. I didn't threaten you. I didn't say, boy, you better, you better raise the seven decibels on break. No, no. I modeled it. And you know what happened? They started following it too. And here's the best part of that. When the kids then messed up, because somebody's like, why well, I gotta say that every day? That's just stupid. Here's why. It's gonna lower your blood pressure. Because when the kids messed up, or they acted out, this is what I did. Let's see how good your memory is. Let's say, let's say my man, he's cutting up. Man, man, I'm, I'm about this close. I'm about this close. But you know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna attack you. I'm not gonna go to you personally. I'm not, I'm not even gonna interact with you. I'm not gonna go there with you. I'm not gonna go there with you. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, hey, first one is. Follow the rest. They said it, I didn't. Let's go. And you know what? If I would have told him, follow directions, you know what immediately he would have did? He would have talked back to me. He would have argued. He'd have been defensive. But when all of his friends say, follow directions, he ain't gonna argue with 40 of his friends. Changes his whole posture. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why not use them? Let them police one another. Let them have some say in the dictation of how the class goes. They'll surprise you. And then lastly, lesson transparency for the daily wins. Why are we hiding lesson plans still? Why some, some of y'all hiding it like it's a government secret? I guess it's in my, it's in my binder. You'll know when you know. What? <laughs> Just put it on the wall, man. Like if you come into my class, I got, I got the whole semester of each month what they're supposed to know. And you know how that helps? Because now when that student walks in and they see that they're ahead of the game or they're deficient, they can take ownership of it. They don't need me to beat them over the head. And it doesn't feel like it's reactive. Because they can see it now. If it, let's say we're supposed to know 10 notes, for example. And she's only got two. Now I can call you over and I can point. I say, hey, you're supposed to be on 10 notes. And she knows there's truth in that. He's not just picking on me. I, I've been seeing it. And you know what? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, because I didn't really practice last month. I didn't. I didn't. You, you got me. I didn't really practice. Um, but I'm, I'm going to pick it up because I can see now. And, and here's another thing I might do. I might say, hey, class, uh, fantastic job on our, our music today. Uh, raise your hand, everybody that's got 10 notes. The whole class raised their hand except for one student. All of a sudden, I ain't got to say nothing. I ain't got to say nothing. And I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even stand next to her. I might be on the other side of the class, not to draw attention to her. But now, and you know what? Some of the students, they just lie. They just raise their hand. But they know they ain't got 10 notes, right? Like, they, they probably had their hand down. They see everybody in the class. <laughs> but I know, and then after class, once everybody's left, hey, look, I see you saw your hand up. I think you're a little mistaken. Uh, I, looking at my grade book, you, you, got, you got two. You're supposed to have ten. When can, we, when can we get you caught up? Then it's not like, oh, he's picking on me. Because they think we're making up the rules as we go. And sometimes maybe we are. But, but they think we're making up the rules as we go. So I just put them on the board. Look, this is what it is. There ain't even no doubt. Know your audience, that's the big one. Look, I told you, they call me to play. I know my audience. Do you know your audience? Somebody said, hey, I don't like teaching these kids because this is a whole what's in it for me generation. I say, great. 
I love the what's in it for me generation. Because now if I can show them what's in it for them, we win. I love it. Because they've already shown me what, 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 the win, what the win button is. If I can just find what's in it for them. And here's the good part. Once you find what's in it for them, man, they'll do anything for you. I could walk in my classroom right now and tell my students to stand on top of their head. And they'll do it. They'll do it. I wouldn't do that because I love them. But they would do it. Why? Because, because they know that I've taken time to know what matters to them. That's what doing what matters is all about. You know, I love my wife. I'm going to do right by my wife, not because somebody told me, no, don't do her wrong, or her grandfather married us, bless his soul, you know, and he told, and he told me, he told me, do right by her, but I'm not doing right by her because somebody told me what to do. I'm doing right by her because I love her. It's about the heart. So our students have to know that we have their heart, that we're in pursuit of it. Relationship is key. Relationship is the key. Once you get the relationship, then the relevance follows. Because once you know something about somebody, there, there's some stuff, me and my team were talking today, and I was thinking about my wife, I was like, ooh, she would like this. How do I know she would like this? Because I have a relationship with her. You can't give somebody something if you don't know anything about them. Nothing of value. And our kids deserve something of value in this teaching experience. I don't teach a class, I give them an experience. I stopped teaching class a long time ago because class don't work. Class is boring. But an experience will make an 18-year-old man come back and say, thank you. That's what it'll do. Rigor. They don't mind working if they know it's paying towards something and if they know you care. They're people pleasers. These are the motivators. We all have a sound. That's why I say let us be the sound to change the world. Seeing yourself beyond yourself, operating in optimism and excellence, utilizing available resources, nourishing relationships. And I say don't stop, keep on going. If you take a look at this packet right here, or this handout, it says Sound 180 Classroom Behavior Sound Check. I love this thing because it's got some stuff in it. It's just, it's just real life, guys. It's just real life. It says sound indicators that the classroom behavior practices need to be tuned up. I'm going to say this again. I'm not telling you that you're wrong. I'm just saying, come on, guys, let's just kind of tune up a few things. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Number one, classroom routines are being disrupted. And sometimes it's not always the students. Sometimes it's not always the enemy. Sometimes it's the inner me. Sometimes we mess ourselves up. Let me give you an example. I'm teaching. Everything's going good. Then I get bored. Lesson's so bad, I'm bored with it myself. So I start telling a story or make a joke. Then all of a sudden I realize I gotta get back to business. They don't wanna get back to business. I get mad at the students. Whose fault is that? That's mine. It's just stay focused. Lack of academic achievement and attainment. Sometimes they don't do better because they don't think they can do any better. When's the last time that student that never got a C before, never got a D before, they've been on that F? When's the last time maybe you just kinda scrapped the plan, brought it down a notch just so he could get a win? Let her get a win. Because if she gets a taste, if he gets a taste of success, he may want to bump that thing up to a C. But if he doesn't ever feel like he's got that possibility, you're not going to see a better result. Student participation is low. Hey, sometimes it's low. It's the end of the day. Y'all hadn't even really noticed what I did. I've been walking around. I'm a band director. I'm hardly ever on my podium. I'm, all, I'm back here, man. I'm, 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 in, I'm in the trenches. Back in the day, we say, we, I, I'm gully, man. I get down in there with them. I'm not up there. You know, like, like if it was 8 o'clock in the morning, I would probably be right here and, you know. That's, that's not going to work at 2 o'clock. That's not going to work right after lunch. I promise you that's not going to work after lunch. You got to do things that gets the participation going. And sometimes it makes us look foolish. For example, let's see if you remember. First one is... Come on, yeah, you got seen it, yeah. First one is... Yeah! See, I didn't ask y'all to get with it, but look what I had to do. I had to go 112 just to get y'all 100. <laughs> now, if I would have said, hey, guys, first, first one is, then y'all would be like, follow direction. <laughs> follow your own direction. Right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have got with it. Right? So, so you've got to do things to get that, that student participation up. Instructional time is frequently being wasted. Just don't waste the time. Time is valuable. You can make more money, but you can't make more time. You only got 180. Let's make the most of it. Teachers feel frustrated. You can't teach when you're tense. That's where the accountability journal is so important. 
each and every day, taking a little bit of time to do this, I'm telling you, it's going to reap some rewards. Now, I may kill your printer. I'm sorry. Okay, I can't help you with the paper thing. Maybe we'll talk to the superintendent. Print out some. I, it'll be the best investment you ever made. I'm telling you first, firsthand. Factors that contribute to an unsound class environment. Rules are poorly designed, unclear, and perceived as unfair. I gave you the code of conduct. My students buy into it because I gave it thought. I get it. My man Harry Wong says three to five. I got seven. That's an upper completion for me. I stick with my seven rules. Follow directions, raise your hand, speak, stand, you see, be prepared, respect property of others, trios of respect, gum, candy, food, or drink are not allowed. We say it every day. Every one of my students can say it that way. And they just don't say it. We say don't talk about it, be about it. Well, what, how do you get them to believe in it, Mr. How do you get them to say it every day? Because with every day, I bring a new spectrum to it. I bring a new enlightenment to it. For example, follow directions. I might tell them something like this. I might say, uh, hey, I'm not trying to boss you. I'm like GPS. When you get in your vehicle and you do the GPS, you put the, you put the address in. Everybody say directions. directions. You put the address in, okay? Then when that GPS tells you to turn right, if you decide to turn left and then argue with the GPS, you're foolish. <laughs> that makes no sense. So, so why then would you allow me, your success GPS, to tell you the way to go and you argue with me? It doesn't make sense. Do you understand how a kid can understand that? You gotta put it out the way, and then they're like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, he's just trying to help me. Then the rules aren't anti-student, they're pro-student. Next, students are not uh, invested in the classroom rules. I just told you about that. Teacher administration, uh, cooperation is poor, administration is inactive or non-supportive. I had a little something with my administration today, where something kind of went down, and, and, and it was a result of a lack of communication. And I understand that I have to continue to communicate if I want this to be a healthy relationship. Uh, my wife has taught me that. She is, I don't like to communicate, but she has communicated to me that I need to communicate in order for our communication to be better. <laughs> Therefore, I communicate whether I want to or not. So I'm telling you, whether you want to or not, you better communicate. Communicate with the administrators, but they just don't get it. They probably don't because they're seeing it from the mountaintop and we're down at the ground level. We're in the forest. Both, both journeys are, are significant, but the perspectives are different. They're not gonna see it the way you see it. But if you communicate to them your concerns and needs, and if you're patient, and if you take time to understand and, and what they're going through too, you come to an agreement. It's got to be some compromise sometime. Next, um, teachers have punitive and reactive attitudes and practices. You can't be reactive. That's why I say be proactive. Have you st start your day, start your day in a proactive way. Have the transparency of the lesson, be proactive. Don't just get mad when they fail the test. Do they even know what they had to do to be successful on the test, leading up to it? Next, 12 come, I, I get passionate, I'm not fussing at y'all today. I know I, my, voice got, my voice got rough, I, I, gotta, I gotta calm down. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy y'all. 12 common teaching train wrecks. Oh, here's some good ones here. Defining the behavior solely by how it looks. Look, you can't go by what it looks. Sometimes a student will act out but you have to ask yourself, why? Very few children wake up in the morning with the intention of making your day miserable. Something has happened for them to react that way. It's not an excuse, but it behooves you to understand where they're coming from. This is my favorite one. My, my wife does this a lot. Asking students, why did you do that? What were you thinking? Why? <laughs> and then I have no problem with the question. Here's the problem I got. The answer they're going to give you ain't going to make you happy. So then they tell you the truth and you're like, well, that was the stupidest thing. I <laughs> so watch this. The next time they have an opportunity to tell you why they did it, they won't tell you. You didn't want that answer anyway. Stop asking stuff you don't want the answer to. Just tell them what to do, right? Don't ask them, especially if it's an adolescent boy. Don't ask us stuff. We don't know what we're thinking half the time. Sorry, gentlemen, we don't. We don't know what we're asking, what we're wanting to do. Number three, the, when the approach is not working, the teacher simply tries more of it and tries harder. Well, it's not working, I'm gonna do it more. No, do something different. Collaborate, connect, go to Sound 180 Educator Enrichment. Post the question, hey, I'm having difficulty with this. Somebody knows the answer. Violating the Sound 180 First Days Lasting Ways principles or rules. You can find that more on the, on the Facebook page as well. Lack of planning in regards to transitions. Hey, I learned this. I used to teach the Midget Mafia, pre-K and kindergarten. It's a dangerous group, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all know. Midget Mafia, I learned that a child's attention span is their age in minutes, give or take. So when I had the Midget Mafia, I got five minutes. Bro, if you can't get it out in five minutes, you better move, you got to move on, because they're not going to stick with you to figure out what the end going to be, like the song say, right? So, so, so,